Hello everyone, Lazuki123 here, and it, it's uh, it's been five months. <coughs> um, I know it's been a really long time, and it is my fault that I take full responsibility that I have not been uploading. It's due to the fact that I've I've been partially lazy, and I've also been busy too with this new school year but since I I am um, on a Saturday and not doing anything I figured hey let me do something for you guys the whole 16 of you who are subscribed to me and so today we're playing Clannad the past path this is not a licensed game by key it is a fan made game and for those of you who don't know Clannad it's about just a whole bunch of things and this game starts off this whole story base is based off of the main character in the actual Kanad, Moya's father and him his love life with his wife and so let's get let's get into this This is a, this is a visual novel, by the way. There was always a flickering light, just out of reach. It floated alone in the darkness. How I longed to reach it, to find a way of the hopeless life I have made for myself. It danced ahead, flying away, flittering, fleeting, in a world of nothingness. And she stands there, forever waiting. <clears throat> I am kind of sick, guys. Sorry. I keep having the same dream. An orb floats above before me. I always reach out for it, but I can never grab it. I get smaller and smaller before disappearing into nothingness. Sometimes I try running towards the light, but I never manage to reach it. It slips right through my fingers and disappears. It start I started having these dreams a year ago. Things seem to be quiet for them. Life was simple. It was a life where I knew happiness. I knew nothing. I know nothing. I have nothing. I am nothing. I just lie here day after day, eyes shut, not moving, not caring, just thinking to myself. Morning comes. A new school term starts today. I slowly open my eyes. I look up at the ceiling. I've known this scene too well for too long. The light bulb hangs overhead on a, and a thin gray of light shines through the gap of the curtains. I've become all too familiar with the crabs protruding above in the plaster. The faint discolored patches of damp and mildew sprouting and looking down at my face as though openly mocking me. My pathetic life. The comfort of my duvet keeps me lingering there. I hear my alarm clock ticking, and silently, I wait for the minute hand to strike the hour. Splaying my legs and arms out, I enjoy the feeling of my mattress briefly until negative thoughts creep once more into my mind. Looking to the left, I see my school uniform folded up on the floor beside me underneath the issue of Captain. Then I remember. Today, I'll, I'll be going back to school. It took my parents a long time, but they persuaded the principal to let me go back. I tried my best to convince them otherwise. I was surprised when the high school actually agreed to the argument arrangement. Why would they want to take a useless kid like me back? <clears throat> Sigh. But I have no choice now. I throw off the covers and I get up. Slowly I put on my uniform, not caring if I am late or not, for the new term. But I look at the clock and realize I'm on schedule whether I want to be or not. Any sense of resistance or rebelling was beaten out of me back then. That's why I live the solitary lifestyle. It's a happy weakness I can and I can enjoy no longer. Slipping on my tie, I head out and into the hallway. It's dead silent. 
The house seems so empty these days. It's almost as if I were living by myself, alone in this drafty old house. It's a large place, more suited for a big family than ours. I shuffle downstairs and straight to the front door, not caring about breakfast. <laughs> I noticed him before, there are sounds of movement. I guess she's up, probably hoping she can wish me good luck on my first day back, wanting to cheer me on, wanting to cheer on her disappointment of a child. My stomach grumbles, but I ignore it. It's not like missing a meal will kill me. Kicking on my shoes, I open the door and go out. I haven't been outside for months. Just like that, here I am. Despite being a shudder for so long, I stepped outside just like that. I guess it was easier than I thought. I mean, who, who knows what I could face out there. But here I am. Face the, the familiar scene from back then. The bright light blinds me as I look up. Springtime. It's quiet out. We live all the way in the outskirts of town. Nearly all my neighbors are working adults or retired, so few students walk down this road. Looking around, I can see that I am all alone on this path. There's nobody to walk with, only me. The school term seems. The school term starts today. The wind blows gently, I feel the cold air on my face. I calmly take in and ex exhale. Dragging my feet as I go, I slowly descend the road. The sun shines brightly over the trees as I walk the lonely pathway to school. Birds twitter in the distance. Everything's starting to bloom, but I don't care. Nothing lasts forever. Eventually the plants will wither and die and the birds will stop making noise. It takes a long time to walk down this lonely path, as though I'm getting closer to death with each step I take. Passing by a stream on my walk, I watch the water flow down the brook. The cherry tree stands on the hill ahead, signifying the border of this smaller town. The green belt, the barrier between nature and humanity. It's still quite cold out and I shiver a little as the wind blows past. It's quiet, but my quiet life is now behind me. Today, things will change. I hate this town, and I hate the people in it. And I have no choice but to face it all. I hate my life. As I continue down the path, the dirt path, I find myself crossing onto one of the few roads that runs through my this town. I enter civilization, buildings, homes, businesses. Passing by some other students on my way, I keep my head down. The last thing I want is any attention on the day like today. Slowly shuffling along the pavement, I look, uh, I look up at the stone steps before me as, and that I ascend up to the school, an arduous hike ahead. Swallowing hard, I make my way up. As the sun beats down, I feel my clothes begin to stick as I sweat. I'm not used to having a climb like this. I guess it'll be a regular thing from now on, more trouble than I need. Reaching the top, I gradually come to a halt. Just above the f those last few steps is that school, a place packed with ambitious students, not suited for someone like me. A gust of air continues to blow as the leaves dance on the branches. I try to take a step forward, but my body won't move itself. I urge myself on, but I just stand there, not moving. My legs won't respond. My body just tells me to stand there, as though waiting. Waiting for an answer, waiting for a sign. What am I doing here? Why am I standing on here on these steps? Surely nothing can come of this. What if life just carries on the same and nothing ever changes? Will anything ever change? My life will just continue to be a long and painful misery. I wait. I wait for a response, for an answer, as though hoping that someone will magically solve everything. That something will give me hope. Silence. Nothing but silence. Nice to meet you. What was that? A voice on the breeze. A girl's voice. So delicate and quiet. Particularly a whisper. Barely audible over the rustling of the leaves and the traffic of the distance. With their strength in her tone, I turn around. A group of girls down the steps below. They look like seniors, judging by their uniforms, and... 
was talking to some other girl about something. A junior by the looks of her. Somebody in my ear. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you're... What do you think you're doing listening to our conversation like that? She was very harsh. She has a very harsh tone as she speaks. The others gather around and one talk to her seems confused. She says something in reply. Maybe an apology? But they don't listen. In fact, they get mad. You think you can just butter in whatever we're talking about? Who asked your opinion? They seem to be branding around her. The second year, I talk about this bows, bows me. She seems extremely apologetic, probably regretting ever even starting to talk to them. They push her by the shoulder. She drops her school bag and taunts, contents spill out onto the ground. One other girl gives her a high-pitched laugh with the others kicking away and trampling her possessions. This is bad. I should do something. But, surely, this is just the way it is? Is it an unfair world? She seems to needs to learn that. I mean, there's no doubt there was no one there for me. I should just head up to the school. That way, she may learn how things work. But, I continue to watch. The girls push her again. She apologizes and tries to pick her things up. They trample on her hands. One of them stands behind her and pushes her on, into the others. This could get ugly fast. Stupid brat. Who do you think you are? You fat bitch. They continue to taunt her. Getting meaner and meaner. I should. No. I can't do anything. I should try to turn away, but I can't bring myself to it. They abuse her more and more. The insults become worse. Scum. Trash. Why don't you just die? Then, one of them grabs her by the hair. That's it. I'm stepping in. Hey! I shout her from the steps as I make my way towards them. What do you think your girls are doing? Picking on another girl like that. You should be ashamed of yourselves. They immediately let her go, probably taking in disgruntled tone of that of a teacher or an adult. Squinting, they try to distinguish who I am. One of them realizes immediately loosens up. They turn on me now. We don't want to hear such word from a disgusting person like you. You bratty junior. Show some respect already. Some other students come into view in the steps below. The girl looks, ar looks around them and they seem to give in. Come on. Let's get to school. They head up the steps past me and disappear into the school grounds. I turn to the girl they were bullying as she picks up her bag. I bend down and help her pick up the contents. Are you okay? Thank you so much. You don't need to thank me. I really didn't I didn't really do anything. It's true. I almost walked away. I'm sorry for causing you trouble. Those eyes. As sure. No. It's real it's nothing really. A beautiful girl. With the wind blowing through her hair. Why is she talking to someone like me? Shouldn't she run off by now? It's nice to meet you. I'm Nakakura san. Right. What's your name? I'm Oka. From inside I can hear the chime of the school bell. I shouldn't be late for the entrance ceremony. We should hurry and get get indoors. Okay. I slowly walk through those doors, hearing the girls' footsteps behind closed behind me. Ushinawa, 1985. Uh, this is where I'm going to be stopping, guys. So, until next time, I also want to apologize. I said I was going to make a gameplay of Tulips. That is not possible, sadly, with my recording software because the scaling is not correct 
nor is the frame rate um, correct when I record. It actually, my frame rate approximately for that game is 120 to 150, which is very fast and it's very good for me. But when I turn on my recording software and I try to record content, it drops my frame rate down to at least 60, maybe t sometimes 20, which is very slow, basically. And so, I'm going to say this one more time just in case. We are going to head back to the main menu. And I will see you guys in the next video. Which will, I promise, I promise, will be soon. Approximately maybe tomorrow or Monday, depending on how much homework I am given. Okay. I'm Lizuki123, and I'm signing off.